Is it recording? Yes. All right, so today I'm gonna to show how to use the slap roller and then also demonstrate uh, making forms with slabs. This, this slab roller I recently uh, replaced the cables on, so it's got brand new cables. There's nothing wrong with it. Otherwise, it's up for it needs, you know, it's got old canvases. This is literally what? Uh, 30 to 40 years old, somewhere in there. So it still works really well. The cables wound up. Um, so the first thing you do is make sure this is all the way to that end. When you start, don't force it either way because we don't want to break the cables again. They were old, so that's why they broke. They lasted a long time because I just replaced them last year. You can see that there's some clay on here and you don't want to leave clay for the next person. So, and you also don't want it to get in your pieces unless you want to make a distressed kind of look to the surface. And I'll show you a couple of things with that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just demonstrate a few. Um, just basically how. So I haven't wedged this, but if you want to make sure there's no air bubbles, you wedge it. But you can also pop them and smooth the surface when you, when you, uh, when you work on the, uh, the slabs after you run them through the slab roller. So get a, get a kind of a wedge. It, it makes it easier on the, on the slab roller um, to have a, a, a way to get it in there. And you can take a small piece of clay, smaller than that, to see how thick it is if you, if you want to test to see how thick it is. But this is basically how thick I want to work today because I'm making you know relatively larger pieces. So I want uh, pretty thick slabs. And uh, um, we'll measure them when we get over there to see how thick they are. But I think they're around uh, half an inch. So, so you can see that um, it's a relatively thick slab. But it's got the texture of the canvas on it. And I did, I, I missed something there. I was supposed to put down a, a, a canvas. Uh, so after a while, it's gonna get wet and then it's gonna start stick. So each time you need to lay down your own canvas. It also helps you move things. If you're making really large uh, slabs, so let's just show you something. If I flap that over, I can roll it again. But I want to make sure that the, the uh, this is smooth, doesn't have a lot of clay on it, and uh, so you can also it'll help you pick it up. You know when you want to transfer it to a piece of wood. Um, do not put the wood on here because it'll break the slab roller if we get it to like something like wood running here. So I can, I can run it through again. I made sure that it didn't have any air pockets by the way that I flipped it from the edge on, over. All right, so you saw how much water was on that canvas, right? So if you do that too many times, if somebody comes after you, the next person, the next person, then it's gonna start sticking to the canvas. Um, you, can, you could even do it with, with a piece rolled over, the, over it, but, but just for now, you can just do it this way. If you start seeing clay on here, make sure you scrape it off. And uh, so I get a piece of wood and uh, put it on it. Um, you know, something to put it on. I took my boards over there, so that's the one thing I didn't have ready. But if you'll notice, this board is warped. So your, so your pieces are gonna be warped if your board's warped, unless you straighten them out later. But they also might weight it down a little bit. So that's not gonna be too big of a problem. It's not that warped. All right, so I wanted to show you a few other things. So if you, suppose you want a texture. And I've seen students do this with all kinds of things for texture. But if you want texture, just take you a, there's some lace down here, it's getting ratty and torn up, but you could conceivably uh, bring something from home if you want to and, and create your own textures. Um, or you could go outside and get some leaves or something like that 
And so with this double over, that's going to give a different kind of impression. But um, I had a hole there, so I wanted the whole pattern. So once again, I'm going to wedge it a little bit. And uh, you know, the, the more uniform the piece, the more uniform the slab. So this will have raggedy edges, which sometimes I use in my work. And you take this, and you take the large canvas, and you put it over the thick canvas, and roll it. And don't force it too much. You'll feel the clay when it engages. Then you then you can then you can give it some pressure. But if you go all the way to the end, it's gonna Gonna, it, it, it's going to be a little bit rough on the on the piece. So I'll show you if you go all the way. So it's already past where the slab is right there. So if you go all the way down to the end, and it will do this, it'll roll like that, and it starts becoming harder, like to to move down there. So don't if you're creaking, don't force it past that. So I'm going to roll it back. You have to roll it back across the slab. So. Um, once it gets past the slab, you can lift the canvas, and I'm going to turn it over, and I've got a pattern, see, that one's a little messed up, but it also has a crease there in the middle. If that doesn't bother you, then you can leave that. If it does bother you, then you have to make sure everything is is uh, you might have to go slower with the roller, or uh, it's got a little bit of uh, the paper there. And so, I mean, I've got like really light fabric here that has a pattern in it. Um, this pattern is kind of interesting because it's not quite uniform. When you roll it out, it definitely is not that uniform. Um, this is something I picked up from my dad. We used to make hanging baskets. So we would take them and put them over a round form, and then we'd be planters for plants, and we'd make macrame hangers. Uh, so I come from like that whole tradition of hippie crafts, right? So um, that I can also save. I sometimes just put them on top of each other. These are small enough, I don't need to move them with the cloth, but if you're gonna move them with the cloth, so I also have some burlap here, I'm gonna try that. So I've got two strips of burlap. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of overlap them in the middle and uh, put the clay on top of that. So it'll be where the burlap is. It'll give you a pattern on the edges. It'll be a little, it'll be smoother and uh, um, if there's a if you get a, if you get the canvases really messed up, use the sponge on them. Uh, not with a lot of water, but with enough water to like clean them. And also, if you get your hands are really dirty, then clean this like that. This thing I keep tightening, but it gets loose. That's the one thing that has kind of worn out on it. Is those whoops. And yep, there it goes. I gotta tighten it. Yep. Oh well. Uh, Figure out which one it is. I think it's this one. No, nope. one down below. Smaller than that, I believe. So it's got three uh, Allen screws there, and I gotta tighten them with an Allen wrench. Uh oh, I don't have the right size, or do I? Hopefully, I do. There we go. All right. Got three of them. Oh, they're good. It moves some, so it probably worked. I guess that's a smaller size, but that one doesn't fit. All right. So, yeah, if anything messes up in the studio, just tell me, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll fix it. Um, like this, this. Uh, Extruder sometimes gets loose, so I have to retighten that as well.
Alright, so let's see what that looks like. Alright, so we got a pattern on here, and I may have to, oh, it, the clay was, was only part way on there, so take this off, and, and you can see, it kind of gives a, a, a checker pattern, and uh, that might be interesting as a, as a, uh, a surface patterning on your slabs. And I might use that on some of my work later. So then what I do is I leave them overnight, cover up the top with plastic, leave the canvas there and, I'll, and leave it on a board. If I'm going to do slabs on top of slabs, then I'll put a, a canvas between them and that'll soak up some of the water. So they'll be a little stiffer when I start working with them. Or you can dry them with a heat gun or you can um, also you can uh, you just work with them wet. If you're doing the round forms, it's better to work with them wet because um, they'll generally, the form will hold them together for a little while and then you can take it off once you put the bottom on them. And uh, there's different things that you can do with that too. You can be precise, you can use paddles, you can change the shape of the slabs, um, but alter them by uh, denning them by paddling them, by doing any number of things. Or you can get really precise and use a tool on them. So I'm gonna go over to the other area. So I need to turn this off.